Today we're taking a look at the brand new Gore Chosen box game from Games Workshop that's super exciting. Spiky bits. Make sure you stay in the trenches by becoming a supporter over on Patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out our site, spikybits.com, for all the hot hobby tutorials, news, rumors on all your favorite hobby topics. And head on over to thelongwar.net, that's the home of the battle reports, for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today. What's up Hobby Maniacs, Rob Bear here again today with our How to Play Gore Chosen box set video review. <laughs> I don't know what to call it, but we're going to show you how to play this game in about 15 minutes or less. And it's, it's really exciting. It's like, it's basically like if Blood Bowl and Mordheim had a baby and that baby was raised by the Lord of Skulls, I feel like that's an accurate description of what this game really is. It's fun, it's fast paced, it's a hoot to play, and well, you can definitely drink while you're doing it. So grab four of your friends and let's get to it. So this new game is actually pretty stupidly easy uh, to play. It just requires a little bit of keeping track of things. And I can imagine is, uh, you know, some people are playing and, you know, this is easily like a, a drinking game that it, it might get a little complicated. But other than that, game stupid easy. I, I, I love it. I played it once. It's, it's a really fun and exciting game. And I think, you know, once you get four people in here playing it, it's going to be kind of a little mini pandemonium, so to speak. So first off, they have this thing to play. You basically choose your symbol. Uh, for this demo, we'll just do corn and the chaos symbol. It's super easy right there. Now there's three wrath. So what's going to happen is you're going to get three of these initiative cards and they're going to get shuffled together. But before we do that, everybody's going to put their initiative card in the middle. You're going to draw random initiative cards, basically draw in lots to figure out who gets to choose which, uh, which guy or which warrior. Now, after playing, I have to admit, I'm a little partial to, to this guy here. He's pretty good. He's good all around. He rolls extra dice. This guy, he's hard to hit, but he does a lot of damage, which is pretty cool. So he, those are kind of middle of the road. These other two guys uh, do a lot of damage at range, air quotes range, but they're still pretty good too. So it's kind of like, you know, just your play style basically when it comes to like glad gladiatorial combat. Like, do you want to be up close or do you want to be far away? We'll use kind of one of each here uh, to simulate a battle real quick. Now, once you decide that, the player that had the first initiative puts a guy down anywhere you want, and then the other player puts his down at least two spaces away and then so on and so forth until you get all four down. Now these little these little spaces right here that you see, those are literally pits. If you get pushed into that and you roll uh, one, two or three, <laughs> well, you die. <laughs> you're not you're not coming back. You're not making a bad boys three dog. You did. But you can discard cards from your hand to add pluses to your uh, to your roll. So that kind of helps too. But sometimes you might not have cards, so it just kind of depends. A smart player will wait until you don't have cards to make it a straight up 50-50 chance. This is an obstruction, and you can always push people around using actions into obstructions, into pits. You can't just walk into a pit, or you can push them into the walls, which is kind of funny too. And each one of those, besides the pit, does D3 damage. So kind of a, a nice, neat little bonus there. Sometimes you discard cards as well. Um, that was the only thing that was a little bit of a confusion about whether when you push somebody, if they, if you push them, push them directly back. I couldn't find it in manual, but I'm sure it's in there because that just makes the most sense, I feel like. So once you get set up, you basically take each initiative card per each wrath. So in, in the case here, we got three initiative cards for each because each player is at three wrath here. We're just going to shuffle them in. And now you're kind of getting it, right? Because this is, this is, you could go double, you could go triple, you could go four, you could go four turns in a row to your opponent's one. And that could be pretty bad. Now, savvy players will try to keep track of who got to go already and what initiative is where on the table, like how much extra initiative is out there. So I think it might be a good idea to keep all the extra initiative cards in, in the deck in the middle so people can't have an unfair advantage. That is, you know, if you care that much about it. So you just flip this over and basically whoever symbol it is gets to go. And for this demo, uh, Vexenar the Reaper is the corn symbol and... Uh, Mr. Bloodfane over here is the other symbol. Now, as far as the cards go, 
it's super easy to keep track of. So first off, you put your symbol up here, this is your health symbol. You're gonna be going up and down this, and each time you go from the bottom to the top, you take an injury counter, which has, which is technically a wound. It has a W on it, don't be confused by it. It's an injury counter, and you also take an injury, critical injury card from the deck too. Sometimes they double up, sometimes they make you shuffle, sometimes they give you wrath. This symbol right here is a little wrath symbol that moves you up or down, and every time you play an attack, a lot of times they move you up and down. And Wrath is initiative. So as you're getting beat on, you're building up initiative. It's kind of like in a video game. You're building up fury or whatever you want to call it. Your meter, you know, your your special attack meter is getting bigger. You're getting ready to like come in and pound people with like all your attacks. Because basically you're getting all these actions. You always get five action cards. Now your opponents that are wailing on you, they're only going to get two, two chances to activate and do damage to you. So they're going to have to make theirs count. They're going to use more of their defense cards, right? So now, just as an example, each player gets five right off the bat. So you dish out five cards. Like I said, the corn player's turn would be right here. So we'll just take an example turn real quick. And here's how the cards work. So there's basically a movement attack or a movement action, uh, an actual attack action, and it's a sort of unique action. If you see the symbol right here, it'll tell you to go up or down on your wrath chart. This in, in this instance, it's going down. But sometimes it goes up, like right here, like Desperate Swing. You're only doing one attack, but you're ga gaining a wrath, which may give you an extra chance to activate the next, uh, the next round. So you go through and activate for each initiative card you have until you have no more. Even if you have action cards, the round is over and you discard them. Then you draw back, you know, you shuffle the 24 cards, dish out five to each player, and good to go. So in this instance here, uh, another card that's my favorite is Lunge, but I didn't pull it. So we're not gonna have that. So we're just basically gonna have to, what we're gonna do is a unique action, which is he actually discards two cards. Is it at random? Yep, it's at random. Discard two action cards. You can always do unique if you discard two action. Oh, you get to pick it. Okay. So I'm going to pick Desperate Swing sucks for me. And we'll do Parry is really good to hold on to. Um, that gets rid of a lot of attacks. We'll get ooh, Crippling Blow is good too. Mighty Strike's good. We'll, we'll get rid of Probing Attack. And we'll force him. Uh, he must either discard two action cards at random or move to the hex directly in front of you facing you. We'll just say he wants to, he wants to square off. So he'll, he'll move up directly ahead and he has all his cards now. Now, it's not automatically his turn because we flipped the initiative cards. Remember, we each have three of each and Mr. Reaper has doubled up on his turn. So now that that player is directly in front of him, he gets double attacks, which is pretty dope. So we're gonna do the Mighty Strike which is a super good attack. Four dice right there, but his special ability, if he's in his kill zone, he hits on twos, which is your healthy stat. You only uh, you only move these little wounded markers over if a critical injury card tells you to do so. So he hits on twos, and if your target's directly in front of you when you attack, you roll an extra two dice. So I'm gonna get out the dice right here, and we're gonna go to town on this foe, because hitting on twos is super good, unless he has a parry then it's not super good. So there's some really good hits. So only missed once. Five right there. Let's see if he would play a defensive card. So he does have a parry, and a parry is a good one, but it gets rid of a lot of attacks here on uh, the strong side. So after attack is made against you, roll a dice. Each hit that scored less than the number you rolled is discarded and causes no wounds. It's a pretty good defensive tactic. So any threes were discarded, but rolling sixes, eh, you're kind of stretching there. So each one of these dice does two wounds. So you just took eight damage. So if you check on the card right here, which we didn't set up correctly, apparently, we need his symbol. I didn't know where it is. Oh, here it is right here. So basically on his card, you started you're starting at the top here. I'll move it over here so you can see it. Starting at the top right there, Took eight damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now he jumps and goes to the top here. And we add an injury token because now you're counting down wounds and he takes a critical injury, which is enraged. Move your wrath token up two spaces, then discard, discard. So he goes up two to three, which is almost on the cusp of four. 
and this attack actually goes down too. So now you see where the pendulum starts swinging here because he's getting wailed on, so he's going to get three activations next turn, whereas the player that just hit him is only going to get two. So as you do well, you get last chances to do better. As you are getting beat on, you get more chances to kind of pull out and get back in the fight, kind of so to speak. So it's it's kind of like a, um, you know, like um, almost like a street fighter, so to speak, in that regard. And you have uniques, like I said, you can discard two cards to do them. So there's that. And now it's, remember there's only three in here. So this player only has one more chance to activate and there's four cards. So obviously we know, kinda know how this is gonna go. Somebody might get more attacks and there he is. So he is gonna do a mighty strike. Actually it might not because then he would go down. He actually wants to go up. So a wild swing might be better. Can reroll any failed hits. So he's gonna do two. And unfortunately his special uh, ability is he actually kind of, um, he does a repose type thing, which is pretty cool. And he hits on fours and it does four damage. So this player over here only has two cards left. And he has a parry as well with only one card coming up or one activation coming up. I feel like he would play the parry card and try to get rid of that four, which he did with a five. So the attack does not get through. And then it goes to activate again. Boom. Oh, it's one for one right here. Mmm, the tides of turn. So he only has one card left, which will be a crippling blow. He's going to go down to the very bottom, and you can't go any lower, and you can't go from the bottom up to the top. Once you're there, you're just kind of there. So crippling blow is going to be three dice. On sixes, you're going to take a critical injury um, uh, before any dodge, block, or parry cards are played. And he's plus two for his special ability right here. So that's four coming through. The other player would be like, mm, what do I do? We'll try to dodge it on a five or a six. Uh, all four of these, not a single one. So that does one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight damage, plus a critical injury. Oh, I can't, I don't remember if there's any sixes there, but if there was a six, you would take a critical injury. If there wasn't, it's just straight, straight damage. So he's gonna go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and takes another, picks up another critical injury, which would be like move your wrath token up to four. So you kind of see how it's going. He's getting beat on now. He's gonna get four activations to this player's two. And slide one of your damage markers on your fighter reference. Oh, so now he's gonna lose a special ability, um, which would be the repose. Because we still want to hit on fours. Hitting on hitting on Five. Oh, it only does three wounds. Eh, we'll keep the attacks and then discard this card. So that's basically how it works. You keep going back and forth, activating until you're out of cards and doing damage as you go. And then basically, eventually, you have all of your health markers covered in wounds. And once that, once that wounds gets all the way down to here, then you're dead. Or if you get pushed into a pit and you don't roll good, you're dead. Or some of these cards, actually, you have to roll a dice, and if they roll a six, they decapitate you and things like that. So it can get it can get kind of brutal. Like, just because you're looking good on your card doesn't necessarily mean you won't be dead next turn um, from some random happenstance or something like that. Now, there's other cards, too, like backing up. Uh, you, can, you can literally just back up one space if you want to play movement, which also um, takes up or down your wrath. Flee. This lets you move three spaces, and then this is your facing. So that's basically how you face. So you would back up. You can move three spaces and face whichever you want. And then there's one that's a forward card, which is right here. Lunge is actually one of my favorites because you get to go one forward and perform another attack. So if you're down here and you've only got two activations, Lunge is really good because it's um, it's basically lets you take advantage of only having two activations. You get to move and hopefully uh, get an attack off right there. So this one, uh, Lunge so far is definitely one of my favorite attacks. Parry is really good for trying to block stuff. Mighty Strike is amazing, but it's gonna, it's gonna wreck you on your Wrath. And then some of the other ones that aren't quite as good, but they'll keep you even keeled. Like if you're up here right around three and wanna try to keep your activations, like Probing Attack's pretty good. I'm a fan of that one. Uh, Mighty Strike's just brutal. So those are basically the activations. So now take a look at this. Like, so say, so there's three and three. 
So this would go away at the end of the action and he would get four and two. So now this is the, this is how these two players would activate, right? Cause you shuffle these up, dish out five of these new action cards to each player. But this is basically how the turn sequence would go. You know, you'd secretly do this and then it would be like that player, that player, that player, <laughs> holy cow that play four in a row and then of course by that point you know the next two or that but man you could straight up kill somebody right there so being getting welled on and building up all of that anger really helps out at some point right there so this game is pretty fun like i said i was using uh just my miniatures i had painted up from uh the age of sigmar demo but you can also there's rules in here too for a lot of the the actual models from the age of sigmar demo where are they you just don't get the cool cards right here which we already showed you but you can play with these guys from the starter box too which is pretty neat so at least we had some pain oh and then there's an alternate map on the back too which is kind of like those are obstructions obviously but but uh pretty neat stuff here and I, th I feel like for the money it's a good deal because you know it's only sixty dollars and you get basically hundred and twenty dollars with the miniatures in it because you figure each one of these that come right here are you know, roughly $30 if you buy them in the clan pack form. So it's a pretty neat little kit. I really dig it. I think it's I think it's fun. It's a good beer and pretzels game. It gives you four guys to work on and paint up because I mean, let's face it, it's not very hard to paint up uh, red trim and gold or red <laughs> red dudes with gold trim and just base them kind of you know pretty easily. And then the little box, it's pretty neat too. It comes with all the space you need to to put your models like. You can basically put them in here and not have to worry about them getting destroyed. And then you've got extra storage for cards and things that might come out. Or uh, additional models, your dice go right here, your cards, and then the player cards uh, go right over top of that right there. So all in all, a nice neat little set that's easy to set up and easy to explain to somebody. It literally takes about, about 45 minutes to play a two player game. It could take, it says an hour uh, to play four players, but I think for the first game it'll take longer, but if you get, you know, four people together and they know what they're doing, it should take about an hour, I could see, because it can go quick. Like I said, you can be full health, you can have your full box, and then all of a sudden the next turn you're getting thrown into a pit. <laughs> it's a little brutal, but that's the way Corn likes it, right? <laughs> blood for the blood guy. All right, that's it for this one, folks. Thanks for watching. Deleted scenes, bonus content, all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.